go back over here. Oops. When you're trying to run multiple screens, it can get a little monotonous. Uh, make host. All right. All right, everyone. See my screen here? Make sure everything's working. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Trevor Reedy. Um, I run Fairfield Lights. A um, little bit about me, I'm a, I'm a network engineer and tech guy. I do a little bit of everything. Um, and I've dived headfirst into 3D printing about a year and a half ago. Um, so all this stuff that I'm going to talk about is all kind of high level stuff I had to figure out when I got my 3D printer and started doing things um so and, and just so everyone knows trevor was one of those presenters that we pulled in at the last minute to yes. uh help us so thank you very much for pulling this together at the 11th hour we really appreciate it you're welcome not a problem it's a topic i happen to know pretty good so um so 3d printing tldr um it is an additive process so um when you print you put down a layer of plastic you just keep adding to it um, it's unlike when you're doing uh, milling or metalworking where you're going to take material away, you're always adding stuff to it. So um, it takes a little bit longer, um, but you can do a lot of really cool things with it. You can't do with other, other processes. Um, it can be done with plastic, resin, or the new thing is metal, um, usually with a, a welder or a laser beam and a, and a bed of metal beads. Um, that stuff is really expensive, but um, that's a lot of the space stuff is they're starting to do metal 3D printing for stuff now. So it's uh, it's gone a long way. So um, it does take a lot of time to print because um, you're adding each layer a couple of fractions of a millimeter at a time. Um, Printing something that's uh, you know three inches square can take you you know one hour or fourteen hours depends on the complexity of it. So um, set it up, let it run, and it just runs in the background. I'm actually printing right now, so um, it can be a steep learning curve. It's not just a, a plug and play. Here's a printer, I plug it in, it just works. Um, there's a lot of stuff you have to learn, how things work, uh, how all the plastics work, tuning your machine. And we're gonna go over a lot of that today. Um, there is a lot of resources. Um, I have uh, my slide deck, I have post a link at the end so you can look at it. And I have a bunch of resources listed there, um, but Google is your friend. Um, overall, 3D printing is inexpensive after the initial investment of buying the printer. Um, buying filament and the time to run the printer, that's really cheap. Um, uh, before this talk, uh, there was a, a talk where I, I had mentioned in chat of, I print my own covers for pixels. I can't find those covers, but they cost uh, nine tenths of a cent each to print. I've printed 400 of them in the last week. So it's it's relatively inexpensive. Um, <clears throat> not even the sky's the limit on what you can make. Um, people are making rockets with 3D printed stuff. So um, if you can think it, you can print it. So. Um, kind of step into what kind of 3D printers are out there because they're not all the same. And you go look for something and there's just going to be a list and list and list of stuff. You're like, okay, what's going on here? So FDM, fused filament fabrication. This is what most people use. This is the roll of filament um, that puts the 
plastic down on the print bed that makes stuff. Uh, the most common is the lowest cost. Um, print quality is kind of average on stuff. Um, there's ways to make it better. Um, and if you really want something really good, there's finishing techniques to make it look really nice. Um, a lot of the names are that you'll see these are as Perusa, MakerBot, Creality, which is probably the cheapest printer you can find right now, and Utila Maker. The other side of it is stereolithography, if I say that right, uh, or resin printing. Um, it provides the best print quality because it's a vat of resin that you usually use a laser or a light to actually cure the resin in how you want it to look. So it's not layers, you're actually making a solid object from it. So it's a little bit different. Um, it is more expensive. Uh, the materials to make it does cost more. Um, and a lot of these manufacturers is like Form Labs, Anycubic, uh, Pio Poly. Um, they're really specialty. Um, I don't have metal listed here because it's really industrial and really beta right now. This is stuff that you can buy right now from Amazon. So uh, <clears throat> here are some pictures of FDM printers. Um, on the left is the Ender 3 here. Uh, this is the Prusa Mark V, the Utility Maker, and the MakerBot. Um, these, uh, you'll probably see them as props in movies because they look cool. Um, but th this, I've got a bigger version of this printer at home. So um, it's just so what you look for, kind of what, what they look like. And um, SLA or uh, resin printers, uh, this is what they look like. You see there's a, a vat of, of goo or the resin and they use a light on the bottom to make it and they actually lift the thing you're printing up out of the vat. So it prints kind of backwards. Um, these are really cool to watch to print. So when you're going to look at a machine, what do you want to look for? Because there's so many different options out there. You can look at stuff, well, here's this one printer. It does this, but what, what, what does it mean? What, what do I really want? What am I trying to do? So the big one you want to look at is build volume. This is the area inside the printer that you can make something with. So the bigger it is, the bigger print you can do, or the more smaller things you can do at once. Flip side of this is the bigger the printer, the more it physically takes up space and the more it costs. Um, well, I'll have some of the costs later so you can kind of see what the difference are. Um, Another thing to look for is a print bed heater. So when you print, you you put this plastic down on a on a piece of metal or a piece of glass or plastic or something. Um, to get the plastic to stick, to make sure stuff doesn't pop off and you have problems with it, you heat the bed up to make the plastic just stick a little bit more. Um, you'll find some printers have it and some printers don't. The ones that don't are a little bit more inexpensive, but you can't do all the different plastic types or filaments. So if you can find one with a printed bed, look for one with a printed bed. Um, then talking about the print bed, the actual material, you'll find a list of stuff. You'll find, you'll find glass, it's super smooth, super flat, really looks nice. Um, there's a PEI, uh, which is a plastic coated um, material that you can pop things off of it really um, easily. Um, a wham-bam sheet is PEI. Or uh, a lot of manufacturers have a magnetic sheet, which is basically just a magnet with uh, another layer on top of it that you can easily pull stuff apart and pull things apart. It works great for PLA, which is one of the most common plastics you have. Um, but it causes problems with some other filaments, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, the next thing you want to look for is how hot will it get? Um, you really want a printer that will get as hot as you can get it. Um, 260C is really the upper end of where you want to be looking for for most um, kind of filaments. Um, I specifically call PETG and ABS. For us in the lighting community, 
these filaments are the ones that are UV resistant. So if we're having stuff outside and the sun's beating on it, it's not going to change colors and warp or have just general problems. So um, there is a, there's a note I'll talk about later about if printing some of these, um, if you have a, a Bowden feed, which is a, a tube that runs over um, to the print head, uh, there's some problems with higher temperatures. So you have to pay attention to that. And I'll comment about that a little bit later. Um, and what does the machine frame look like? Um, for that picture, I have the, the FDM printer. Some of them were all open and some of them were enclosed in a, in a box. The open ones are a little bit easier to work on, get stuff in and out of. Um, they're cheaper. Um, but some plastic filaments, it has problems because of temperatures and environmentals. Um, you also have dust in your room getting on the printer and on the prints as it's printing. Um, a closed one is a little bit neater if you're setting it out in a public area or something like that. Um, or, and if you're doing some filaments like ABS and ASA for the environmentals, because it keeps the, the box a little bit warmer. Um, so the, my comment earlier about the Bowden, the feed type. So when you print, you've got a head moving around and putting the plastic down on, on the sheet. There's two kinds of feed. One is the Bowden tube. So it is a little heat block with a tube that runs all the way back to the frame of your printer where it feeds the filament all the way through this tube. Um, it lets you print faster because you have a little bit less weight moving around on the top of your printer. Um, but this tube is made out of um, plastic and the plastic can melt at higher temperatures. Um, some manufacturers have better Bowden tubes than others. Um, so you need to pay attention to what temperatures you're printing at with it. Um, with that said, I have a Bowden tube printer and I don't have any problems with stuff I print on. Um, it also has some problems with flexible filament. So you can have filaments that are like squishy and soft. Um, it has some problems with that. So you have to do a little bit of, of finding with stuff. Then you have the other side of it, which is direct feed, where you don't have all that tube. You just have um, the print head, the motor that feeds the filament directly into it, all bolted onto one package. Um, you have to print a little bit slower because you have weight on it, but you can print just about anything. Um, the Prusa is the style printer, um, and they both work. Uh, it really just depends on what, what you want to do and your preference. Um, as I said, a lot of this, you're going to be Googling and researching and trying to make your own decision about what, what's going on here. So, um, Machine costs. This is where it really starts. How much does stuff cost? Um, some of this is a little bit expensive. Um, the Ender 3, Monoprice, and Ender 5 are, um, are the most budget-friendly printers. Um, I have an Ender 5. I have an Ender 5. Um, it's a slightly bigger printer, has a bigger print volume. Um, it costs a little bit more, um, but it does everything I want. Um, the poles, the maker bar, um, the flask, Flash forges, those are more commercial geared, a little bit less DIY. Um, here in uh, most of our lighting space, um, DIY is not generally a problem. So an Ender 3, Ender 5, you know, having to put a frame together, that kind of stuff, that's generally not a problem. So um, it does cost a little bit initially, but um, once you get past that hurdle, it's it's great. So um, Filaments. This is the other big part. You've got your printer and then you have your material you want to print with. There's a, there's a lot here. There's different colors, different styles. Um, and honestly, you're going to be stepping through stuff. Oh, I want this color for this, but I want it to be outdoors. So I need this kind of stuff. You'll be, you'll be having a pile. Um, I've got about 15 rolls of filament behind me um, for different stuff. 
So uh, we'll kind of step through the different types of plastic and filaments. Um, so everyone can kind of understand what their uses are for stuff. So when you choose your, your filament to do your actual printing. Um, PLA is uh, the most widely used plastic. Um, it is inexpensive. Um, <laughs> it is widely just everywhere you can find it. Um, I've almost found it at Walmart. I found some accessories for stuff. Like it's that, that common. Um, it is the easiest to print. You don't need a heated bed. You don't have to worry about what the environments are. There's no. We said head hit last time when I watched. <laughs> if you're not talking, please mute yourself. No, who do I get to mute? Your eyes? <laughs> Hang on. Okay, Trevor. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so um, it is the easiest to print. No heated bed, no drying, no special handling. Um, people have had just it sitting on the shelf for three years, pulled it out, and just prints. Um, it works great. And there's a lot of color options. So um, you can do match stuff to fit what you want. Um, if you're printing something for your show, you need black or something to blend into your house or blend into a tree or your grass, there, there's a color to fit it. So um, the big problem with it is, is it does not do well with ultraviolet or sitting out in the sun. Um, it will discolor, um, it will get brittle after about a year. Um, and it has problems with pretty moderate heat or cold. Um, it will start deforming at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and if it's under, I think it's about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, it can break if you grab it and, and squish it hard. So um, there's, there's a little bit of things to consider with that. Um, Another alternate is ABS. Uh, this is um, the same, a lot of household stuff's made out of this, like uh, keyboards and that kind of stuff. This is also what sewer pipes made out of. Um, it is super strong. Um, it's really resistant to heat, um, UV, um, and is really a wear resistant. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than PLA. Um, not by much, a couple of dollars. Um, but it has a medium to hard difficulty to print with. Um, you have to have a heated bed. Um, it has problems with stringing and quality, um, but it can be finished to have a nice smooth texture if that's something you're looking for. Um, a lot of people started with printing with ABS um, and PLA. Um, it's kind of shifted a little bit. Um, ABS also warps, it shrinks. Um, if you have a, a closed frame or a warm room to maintain the temperature, so like a heat cycling throughout the day in a room where you're doing a 12 hour print, that will affect the print quality. Um, generally, um, yeah, uh, it's not a good idea. Um, one thing is, is you must print ABS in a vented room. Um, it does less, let off some chemicals when it melts. That is not recommended to breathe. Um, having a window open is great. Printing it in the garage is even better. Um, ABS, I personally do not recommend ABS. Um, there are many other much better alternatives um, to a strong filament and that alternative is PETG or PETG. Um, it is actually stronger than ABS. Um, it's got good UV heat wear resistance. Um, I print all of my outdoor stuff in PETG. Um, I actually prefer printing with PETG over PLA um, because I just like it. Um, it's just easier to print with once I have my printer set up. So. Um, it does have a medium difficulty because um, you do have to have a heated bed. 
And PETG is um, hydroscopic. It will absorb water out of the air. So you need to keep it in a sealed bag with a, a desiccant. Um, and you have to make sure that it's kept dry if you think it might have absorbed water, um, put in a dehumidifier, um, a food dehydrator, or a oven at uh, around, uh, I think it's 180 degrees uh, for a couple hours to let it dry off. Um, I actually just print directly from a food dehydrator because it's it's easier for it, for me. Um, it does have a little bit of warping. Um, warping is, I probably haven't described this, warping is uh, the edge of the print will bend up as it, as it kind of cools off. Um, it does have a little bit of warping, um, but most of the time it's not that bad. Uh, I haven't experienced really much once I got all I understood what to do and got my stuff tuned. Um, I just printed a, a big, huge cover and I had no warping on it, so. Um, it does require some special care when printed on glass. Um, because PETG is very strong, it will stick to glass. And when you try and pull it off the glass, you will break the glass. Um, there's, we recommend putting um, some sort of um, uh, layer down between on the bed to help uh, the adhesion and help pull it off a little bit. Um, blue painter's tape, um, uh, a glue stick works. Um, I use um, uh, a nanopolymer from, I forgot the name of it. Um, it just, there's, um, there's some ways to do it. Um, just be careful when you print on glass. Um, there's a lot of people who just, PEDG, I don't print on glass, I do. Um, and uh, recommend from chat, put it in the fridge to help cool it off that and split it. Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't done that, um, but I have heard of that, so. Um, and it is preferred over ABS if you want something strong, so. Um, getting into some of the more fun filaments, uh, flexible filaments, um, TPU, TPE. It is uh, flexible and soft like rubber. Um, I've seen people print uh, for like RC cars, print the tires for their cars out of this. Um, it's like, um, like, like squishy rubber. It, it's really easy, fun. Um, it is hard to print with. Um, because it is super soft, um, you have to have a heated bed or and a direct drive. Um, I have heard people work with a Bowden tube working on an Ender 3, Ender 5, but uh, generally it, it doesn't work. So you need um, a, a different printer for it. So um, I haven't had a use for, for flexible, but that doesn't mean that you won't. Um, there is stringing and blobbing issues. So when it prints it, because you're melting plastic um, because of the feeding, it it just has some quality issues with it. Um, it has issues with bridging, which is if you've got a gap and you're printing between it, um, it doesn't like to go between the two of them that well. Um, it 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 works. Um, you just it's some tuning, and you have to you have to learn it. Uh, I said there's a learning curve, so. Um, ASA is another kind of filament. This is another super, super strong, high impact, high wear resistant. Um, it is super strong. Um, it's a little bit stronger than PETG. Um, it is a little bit harder. Um, it requires a heated bed and higher extruder temperatures, higher printer, higher temperatures than your printer. Um, uh, you might have to do modifications to your printer to print ASA. Um, you have to go upwards up to close to 300 degrees Celsius to print on it. Um, but it's an alternative for PETG if you want something that's going to last really long or something that's going to rub all the time. Um, it is expensive, but it is an, an engineered plastic that people will make mechanical parts out of ASA, like gears and that kind of stuff. Um, and just like ABS, it does have to be in a ventilated room. Um, it does let off some some pretty nasty chemicals. Um, PETG and PLA don't, so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Um, 
that's just the main ones. There's a, there's a lot of hybrids and other stuff. There's PLA plus, which is a little bit stronger than PLA, doesn't warp does as much and doesn't handles temperatures extreme a little bit. There is carbon fiber infused to make stuff really strong and handle wear resistance. Um, if you want stuff that you can paint or sand or make that looks like wood, there's a wood filled one. Um, there's polycarbonate, which is uh, soda, uh, soda bottles and water bottles. Um, it's also very difficult to print with. Um, and there's a lot of brands out there. Um, not one brand um, is going to work for you. I run like four or five different ones. Um, the big thing is test a couple out. Um, Hatchbox Overture is a good starting point. Um, a lot of people have had a lot of success with it without having to do a lot of work with it. So it does it does work pretty good. So um, you will have to do some tuning to get quality prints. Um, it's going to matter in different brands, different materials, different colors. Um, uh, I already talked about um, some filaments are hydroscopic. Um, PETG, I'm looking at you. I love you, but you're annoying. Um, but a little bit of work, you can take care of it. Um, key filaments in an airtight bag with large dust packs to take care of that. Um, you do want to dry them before using it. I talked about that. Um, you could also print out a dry box, um, which is basically just a box with a desk to absorb the air to help with that. Um, and um, I am one note about this is I am I am in California. Um, our community average is thirty to sixty percent, and I do have to dry my PETG um, and my PLA. Um, my house leaks like a sieve for air, so. I, I just print every, I just dry every print so I get quality issues. So, um, so um, most useful people use PLA, PLA plus PETG. Um, uh, one thing to note is don't experiment with new filaments on complex prints. Um, I've seen people, oh, I've got this new filament. I'm going to print out, you know, a hundred of this. And they start printing and it's a complete disaster and they get discouraged. Um, there's a lot of test prints out there, like Benchy is a good test print, use that. Um, and you can download objects to print and test prints from a bunch of different sites. Thingiverse, CG Trader, My Mini Factory. Um, you just look for it and uh, you'll be able to find it. Uh, so, um, Almost, almost there. Got a couple more minutes, so I'm doing pretty good. Um, so software, software when you're dealing with printing. So I talked about the hardware stuff. You got to get the, the the prints and make it in there. So there is a CAD device, CAD program. So if you want to make your own things, a um, couple of the big ones um, is Tinkercad. Um, it's pretty easy, browser based. It's free. Um, SketchUp, uh, which has been recommended a lot of times, it, it is very good. Um, the web version of it is free. Uh, if you want a desktop version, it does cost a little bit. Um, or more professional level is Fusion 360. Um, I use Fusion 360, but I'm familiar with Autodesk products. Um, if you're going to make something, really just try them all. Uh, there's trial versions of them all. Play with them, see what you like. Um, it's a lot of trial and error. There's no one right answer with 3D printing. Um, so once you make your device, or you, or you make your object, your item, and you download it, um, so you need to what's called slice it. So this makes it into code that the 3D printer can, can do, because remember, we're, we're using little layers. So we have to slice it into stuff. So it converts um, your STL, which is your object file, into G code, which is code that your printer can use. Um, a lot of common ones is Cura, Simplify 3D, Slicer. Uh, there's Perusa Slicer. Um, I use Cura. Um, there's a lot of different ones out. There's no right one right slicer. Um, it's, it's a try it thing. So um, 
is a lot of different things. Uh, you know, you'll have to go out there and just try with and see which one, see which one works for you. So, um, starting to run a little bit out of time, so I'm going to run a little bit faster. <laughs> um, you still got plenty of time. It's only you still got twenty minutes. Oh, it I says I've got forty-seven, so I'm at forty-seven minutes. So, <clears throat> all right. Uh, um, Maybe my, my time's off a little bit. All right, so <laughs> we're good then. Um, I just want to make sure we got time for questions at the end because I know we're going to have questions. So, yep, um, good. so before you print, you're going to have to tune your printer a little bit. Um, no 3D printer will print well out of the box. Um, there's just little adjustments you have to do um, depending on everything that's going on. Um, a couple of big things that I've learned while setting all mine up is um, what's called the extruder steps. This is, uh, you've got a little, a motor that moves the filament and it does it in little steps. And what your slicer says and what the software in the printer says and what it actually does are not going to be aligned. Um, there's a couple of processes to look the how to do this. You can find it online. Um, once you do this, a lot of problems go away. Um, Another one is um, retraction distance and speed um, and print speed. These are all kind of related. Um, this is, there's a lot of guides on the internet. Once you get your printer, figure Google and find out what people are saying for your printer with your slicer, what to use. Um, and I'm mainly putting this in here so you guys can use this for later. Um, I don't expect everyone to you know, understand what I'm talking about right now, so. Um, Print acceleration jerk is the same same kind of just tuning settings. Um, and the number one issue that I see is bed leveling. So your bed sits on a, on a gantry that goes up and down. You have to make sure that bed is level to your nozzle. Um, there's a lot of processes about it. Different printers have automatic le bed leveling. Some have to do it manually. Um, you you just have to you just have to test it every time, um, and it will be an ongoing kind of tuning adjustments as you go. So um, it's it's just how kind of work of the things. So um, so um, when you print, you can print directly. Um, plug um, there's software most printers come with. Plug it into a USB. Um, it does type your computer. Um, it can allow for some changes and tweaks on the fly. Oh, this isn't printing right. I want to adjust it. You can do that kind of stuff. Um, one thing is, is the print can fail if your computer goes to sleep. Um, and if you accidentally close the program of, oh, I'm, I'm just closing all these windows and oops, there went the program. Oh, there went my, you know, five hour print. Uh, can't restart it. it. It's all trash. Um, you can print from an SD card. Um, it does free up the computer, uh, but you have no control over it. It's plug it and go and hope it works right. Um, it can be cumbersome managing files. You have an SD card to move it back and forth. Or my preferred one, which was just said in chat, Octoprint. Um, this is a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's got a pretty web interface. It has drag and drop file management. Uh, you can have it print failure detection. So if something messes up, it can stop it for you. So you don't just waste filament. Um, there's um, a little bit of work to set up, but it it's not any any different than setting up like X schedule or setting up um, a FPP. Uh, it's there's a lot of guides online, um, and I use it exclusively. Um, so here's a picture of what it looks like on my printer printing my C9 bulbs. So it tells you how far you're at, uh, how long it's going to take. It, it's really easy. You can move stuff around. And it gives you a pretty picture that you can watch it in a time lapse. Um, Octoprint also supports helping out um, automatic bed leveling and tells you how level your bed is and what's going on. Um, there's an upgrade that I put on my printer that to do this, um, you literally click this update bed mesh now and it levels my printer. And I don't have to worry about any manual adjustments. It's, it is, it is 
absolutely wonderful. So um, uh, a lot of it is, um, you know, in summary, there's, there's a lot of options. Um, there's no one right way. It's like doing your light show. Um, I like it this way because I like it that way doesn't mean, you know, it, it's however you want to do it. Um, you can always adjust something and tweak it and adjust to upgrades. Um, there's a lot of options out there. If, if something gets messed up or goes sideways, don't get discouraged, ask for help. Um, and Holiday Light Think Tank, there's a bunch of us that do printing. Um, there's resources online. Um, it, next slide, we'll have a bunch of that. Um, and once you really understand what's going on, um, 3D printing is just another tool in your toolbox to do stuff of like, like I really need a clip to clip around this two by four to hang lights on my house because I don't want to put a hole in it. I had that exact issue. I 3D printed a, a clip that I'm going to hang pixels on next year. Um, so it it it's like, oh, I can do that. I, I don't have to go to the hardware store and make something up. So um, there are a lot of resources. Um, this slide, um, uh, when you download my, uh, if you download my slide sheet, it's got all these are link linkable. Um, there's a lot of guides, um, YouTube videos. Uh, if you're looking at Octoprint, there's a whole subreddit for it. Um, it there's just resources all over the place. Um, so just kind of kind of looks through stuff and figure out figure out what you want to do. So um, if you want to reach out to me, um, I am on the Holiday Light Think Tank. Um, I also run Fairfield Lights, and if you want to download the deck, um, you can get this URL right here. I will put it in chat. So uh, you can download this uh, this deck. It's got all the information in there. Um, so at this time, um, that's kind of what I have for the presentation. Um, We'll open up to questions. I just have the chat here, and I know there was a lot of stuff yep, going there's on. There's quite a few in the chat, so you yeah, time. <laughs> you got you got 15 minutes, so yeah. Um. All right. Um. So uh, comment. A P A T A B S is a pain in the butt. Yes, it is. Um. I, I didn't even buy ABS when when I started printing. Um, I just went straight uh, PLA and PETG. Um, uh, and uh, it was coming about uh, pulling the um, PET off glass, um, put it in the fridge and let it cool down. Um, yeah, because you've got two, two dissimilar materials, you cool it down and they, they'll kind of split apart. Um, if you're pulling pulling Pete something off a glass bed and you don't think it's coming off right, just stop and let it cool. It, it may not be fully cool. Go put it in the fridge. Um, uh, pull the glass bed off. Look at it. Um, the last thing you really want to do is break a glass bed. Um, if you think it's coming off bad, take it outside to a safe place with some glasses on because shattered glass is just bad. <laughs> um, uh, what does somewhat UV, UV resistant really mean? Um, would you paint PETG really make a difference? So all plastics um, will degrade via UV. Um, so it's UV resistant means it it takes longer for it to break down. Um, it's not like metal that you know, doesn't break down. You know, so, but um, uh, would you paint PETG? Um, it depends. If I'm using it for a light show kind of stuff, I'm putting it outside. I personally wouldn't, um, because if PTG lasts, you know, five six years, by then the chances of just breaking it from putting it on and off and when wear and use is higher, and it's almost easier just to print to reprint something. Um, if you can't find the color of something you want to match, then yes, you can paint it. General, just plastic spray paint works fine. Um, if you want to add an extra layer of UV resistance, you can use clear uh, um, plastic UV spray paint, um, UV resistant spray paint, and just lightly coat it, and it'll help help it last longer. So, um, 
non-UVA plastic resist non-UVA resistant plastic tends to become more fragile and crack when exposed to sunlight. Uh, yes, um, uh, P PLA is a big one. Uh, uh, TPU will do that for soft filaments. Uh, ABS is a little bit more resistant. So um, just kind of look around and look what the plastics are. There's a, there's a couple of videos of people who've left stuff out and reviews of the different different brands of filaments and how long they lasted and that kind of stuff. So uh, design spark mechanicals free. So this is talking about the CAD program. I've never used that. Um, so um, there's another one to add to the list, uh, design spark mechanical. Um, uh, Cura is free. Yeah, Cura is um, is a slicer. Um, it is free. There's I use it a lot. Um, it's a little bit more complex. Um, so uh, just kind of Play with the different slicers, whichever one you want. Um, Easy ABL and BL Touch are great upgrades for printers. Let's talk about the automatic leveling. So I actually put a BL Touch on my on my printer. It's got a little probe that comes down and touches the bed, and it knows how far it came up and down. So it knows how to level it and does a little mesh on it. So um, I don't have to do any knobs or tweaks or anything. I, I get it close and I just let it handle it. So. Um, Octopi and point caster for um, uh, automated printing. Um, I've never used point caster, um, so I can't speak to that. But um, best investment next to the auto bed um, is a, U, uh, a UPS power backup. Yes, uh, that is very good. If you have a, an area where you have power problems, um, a UPS backup to, to help hold any power blips, that kind of stuff is great. Just make sure you get one that's big enough. Uh, there's a 350 watt power supply in, in my parts in my printer. Um, so, you know, get a big one. Um, don't don't go small. Um, so uh, what do you think of a printer that moves its bed instead of the printhead? Um, so this is the Ender 3 versus Ender 5. So the Ender 3 moves the bed around. Um, Ender 5 uh, moves the head around. Um, it, it's really your preference. Uh, the print quality is really about the same. Um, there's different styles of printers made act differently. So um, it, it, they both work about the same. Um, it's, I haven't seen any quality of them, so. Oh, hey, my 3D print just finished. Um, 3D printing has become an abler um, for other hobbies. Uh, yes, that was one of the, I got it mainly for light show stuff. Um, I've been looking at it. I'm like, but this year I'm expanding a lot of stuff. I needed clips. I needed brackets. I was just going to make it. Um, but I've gone into other stuff of, oh, hey, this cap is broken. Okay, well, I'll just replace it instead of trying to find one. Or I need to, I want this custom bracket to hold something and I can just make it. Um, I'm actually printing a, a case for an outdoor weather station right now. So uh, there's a lot of stuff. So um, is there a good protector that works um, to help UV and printed stuff like PLA? Um, uh, Krylon clear uh, spray paint is UV resistant. You can do that. Um, the big problem with PLA is its heat. Um, if you outside, if you have 90 to 100 degree days and it's holding weight, it's going to deform on you. Um, it, it's not good under heat. Um, so um, model trains are also big. Um, yep, yep. Um, can you show and possible um, share the pixel cover? So um, yeah, actually I can. Um, I have, let me stop sharing my screen and I can show you what they look like. All right, so here, let me turn this on. And I have, um, I have the box behind me. I have one here, oh, here, I've got one here. All right, so this is what it looks like. Uh, here we go, kind of. It's just a little clear plastic, classic plastic bulb. Um, I actually got this off of Thingiverse. Um, 
on uh, my slide deck on the uh, the last resources, there is a, a holiday group that has these on it. Um, I had to make them slightly smaller to fit on the the um, bulbs on the pixels, but it, it works great. So um, dehydrator recommendations. Um, one that fits your fill that fits your filament um, and is cheap. I bought a little thirty dollar one and cut all the inside stuff out of it and drilled a hole in the side. Um, don't don't buy a hundred dollar big huge thing. You it's it's not really needed that much. So, um, um, good recommendations for first printer. Um, the Ender series is a very, very good starting printer. It's inexpensive. Um, you can do upgrades to it. There's a lot of stuff you can do to it. I bought an Ender 5 because I wanted the bigger build volume. Um, it's twice the price of an Ender 3. Um, Ender 3 is on sale right now on Amazon. You can find them pretty cheap. Um, a lot of people said Ender 3 here. Um, um, Palette, yes or no? I don't know what that is. So. Um, Recommended site to download um, print temperatures recipes. So print temperatures is going to be dependent on your filament. Your filament will tell you the printed range, the recommended temperature, and the bed temperature on it. Um, for um, the actual um, objects to download, um, that is um, on my resources screen. I've got a, a bunch of different resources there, a place you can find them. Um, Thingiverse is probably the most popular where you can find stuff, um, but there are a couple of other ones on there, so. Um, other recommendations, CR10, Ender 5 Pro. Um, I didn't get a Pro. I didn't, I didn't see the need for the extra stuff the Pro provided. Um, uh, is there a big improvement over the Ender 5 compared to Ender 3? Uh, the big thing is the print volume. Uh, Ender 5 is an extra, I believe it's 200 millimeters taller. So if you're going to be printing tall stuff, then the Ender 5 helps out. Um, you can always modify your printer and make it Ender 3 taller. Um, but the horizontal um, size of the 3 and the 5 are the same size. So um, it's really just the vertical height that changes. So. Um, most Enders are good. The 3 is probably the most common, but Ender is open source. Yep, a lot of source. Yeah, the software that runs it is called Merlin. Um, you can swap boards out on them. Um, you can do upgrades. I actually recompiled the software on mine because I wanted some features that the stocks didn't have. Um, I'm, I'm in IT, so I was comfortable doing that. So do um, you ever use HTPLA from Protopasta? I had a few props. Um, that stuff with the metallic flakes, the fourth worked great, heat resist after treating. Um, so I have not used the HCPLA, um, but I do use their PETG from Protopasta. That's actually what this is made out of. Um, this is Protopasta. So um, yeah, I, I use it, I like it. Um, another user of Ender 3. Um, have I printed a Mandalorian helmet yet? No, not yet. I don't have a filament for it yet. Um, I don't have any gray. Um, I was, I really wanted to, I did print some some baby Yodas and I've got glow in the dark. So yes, um, dehydrator is a good thing to have in the South. Yes, um, AstroPrint on my Pi, OctoPrint, it does better, it's quality or just by a different company. Um, it's just, it's just different. Um, OctoPrint's all open source um, and run by a couple of guys and a bunch of code repositories and people can add stuff to it. Um, OctoPrint, it's all the add-ons is your big one so, for it. So um, AstroPrint, HyperX is a good brand or not. Um, oh, i I probably talking about my headset. Um, it's just, I just use it. Um, Micro Center has an Ender 3 for $200, yep. Um, 199. Um, uh, so the, there is software that comes with, uh, I bought an Ender and it did come with software, um, but I didn't use it at all. Um, I just downloaded Cura and downloaded um, uh, the OctoPrint and just ran it all from there. Um, it's, uh, I just use all free stuff. Um, so it, it is extra you have to do, um, but 
it's um, once you have, I only use it a handful of times. I have a file, drop it over there and just let it print. So um, third party motherboard. Um, I'm actually still running my stock motherboard on my, my Ender. Um, I thankfully got, um, I, I had a, the upgraded motherboard because there's a, there's a problem with some of the um, motor drivers on some of the early boards are really noisy on mine. Um, so mine's a quiet one. Um, the entire time I was doing my talk, my printer was printing um, right behind me. So um, it, it it's quiet. So I didn't I don't have any upgrades for it because I really haven't researched to look into it. So um, um, most slicers are free. Yeah, most are. There are some that aren't. Um, I've never I haven't paid for a slicer. So um, the only thing I've paid for is the printer and some upgrades on it. So I, I did a I did a hot end upgrade on mine to do higher temperatures. So I could do um, ASA if I wanted. I did um, OctoPrint with a screen. I did um, a uh, extruder gear upgrade. So I had a, a metal gear because it comes with a plastic one they like to break. Um, and I upgraded my Bowden tube to handle higher temperatures. So um, haven't found anything I couldn't make with Tinkercad. Um, yeah, uh, Tinkercad works great. Um, I use Fusion 360. Um, yeah, it does cost. I happen to have a .edu account, so I have it for free. So that's the only reason I really use Fusion 360. So um, Blender or Fusion. Um, yes, I have done a firmware upgrade. Um, <laughs> free is life. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Yes, I have done a firmware upgrade. Um, I had to do it because I wanted to add um, what's called mesh leveling and the BL touch um, on my printer. Um, and I, I did some tw a lot of tuning and tweaking actually in the firmware uh, with the source code on my printer. Um, so I, I know I have to change one setting in Cura to switch between PLA and PETG. Um, and I can just print it and it just works. Um, so that's why I said tuning is key on the printer. So. Um, uh, I, I still use Marlin. I just upgraded to the most recent, um, and I did custom custom software on it, custom settings on it. So, um, uh, no on Fusion 60. There's a single user hobbyist that can get it free to use. I've been using it for a couple of years now for free. Um, yes, there is a hobbyist version of it. Um, when I and I initially got it, because that's what I was going to use, it said it was free for a year, then you had to pay for it. So I don't know if it's changed or not. So um, uh, honestly, Fusion 360 versus the others, unless you are very, very familiar with doing CAD software, don't use it. <laughs> um, it is very complex, but you can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, Tinkercad uh, or... Um, um, drawing a blank. It's been a long day. Um, Tinkercad or um, SketchUp is very, very easy to use and a good alternative. Um, and so, yeah. So. All right. So we are at five minutes to the half hour. Trevor, thank you very much. That was a great presentation. You're um, welcome. Awesome. Like I said, it's it's nice to see the community get together and do all this. I mean, we've been <laughs> we've been at this for nine hours, and we still got you know several hours to go. So uh, appreciate everybody's uh, participation. Um, I'm going to go ahead here and share my screen. Hopefully, it's the right one. Uh, again, don't forget all of our sponsors who have contributed uh, over ten thousand dollars worth of raffle prizes, which is outstanding. Um, and as a matter of fact, here's one we have right now, last one of the day for this room. Uh, we have a 3D printed mount from Inspire Light Shows. Um, and we will go ahead and roll the dice and see who we come up with. All right, let's go. And the winner of the mount is Travis King. So, Travis, have you, uh, if you haven't won a prize already, then you are good to go. Um, so we will double check that after we're done and um, go from there. So 
Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we still have the GCLF. We have the socials afterwards. So we'll talk to you all later. Bye.